Let's talk about the internet protocol or in short we call it as a IP. In the early days of computing all the computer units were not connected and they soon realized that there needs to be a mode of communication through which all these computer units can be connected and that's where the concept of a networking emerged. ARPANET advanced research project for networking introduced the concept of a networking using the packet switching and that turns out to be the backbone of our modern day communication and we are still using those packet switching concept in our modern devices. But then what is the packet switching? Unlike the traditional circuit switching and if you remember that in the old days we had the old phones where we had a dedicated line from our telephone provider and whenever you make a call then there was an operator who was switching the line so that you can connect to your destination and you can make a call. But in packet switching there is no operator but your data which you want to transmit is broken down into smaller parts and those data is sent from a source to the destination and that's where we use the concept called packet switching. But the next problem with the packet switching is that how will you ensure that you have transmitted the data in the form of packet successfully and it has reached to the correct destination without the loss of any packet. And that's where the Mr. Windsurf and Bob Khan introduced the concept of a TCP IP where TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and IP stands for Internet Protocol. In TCP which is transmission control protocol it is ensured that there is a error free delivery and reassembly of a packets to the destination while in IP which is internet protocol it is make sure that the packet is delivered to the right destination so now you might be wondering that why in modern day cloud computing we are using the term IPv4 so there is a story behind it because it is the fourth version of our internet protocol and before that there were three version which is IPv4 one, two, and three. And those were like a more of an experimental version which were only limited in the lab. And finally, they came out with the IPv4 which, which is made for a general availability or for general use. Now let's talk about that how the IP addresses are formed. So as you can see over here that onto the screen that we have a four digits and these four digits are separated by four dots. And you already know that in the uh, modern day computing or in our digital computing, we have a binaries which is zero and one. So each uh, four digit number on the screen, which you can see is consist of eight bit. So there are four digit places separated by four periods. So which consists of four eight bits. And if you sum all the four eight bits, then you will get 32 bit. And these 32 bit, uh, we call it as a 32 bit IPv4 address, which is assigned to any device which is connected to internet. Here are some crazy facts about our 32 bit IPv4 address. With 32 bit, you can have a 4.3 billion possibilities of your IP addresses, which means you can connect 4.3 billion devices around the world using internet. But still we are running in a problem, we are running out of these IP addresses and we are in a situation where we are uh, calling a term that IP exhaustion, which we will talk in some later videos. What is the IP exhaustion problem? Now you know more about the IPv4 address. So let's talk about the public address and private IP addresses. So there is an engineering committee which is called IETF which stands for Internet Engineering Task Force. So this committee is formed and the responsibility of this particular committee is to reserve the IP ranges for public IP as well as for private IPs. But you might be wondering that why there is a need to reserve the public and the private IP ranges. And these IP ranges are also called it as a CIDR ranges, which I will cover in the next video. What is CIDR and how to calculate the IP ranges based on the CIDR. But anyway, so here on the screen, you can see these are the IP ranges which are reserved for private IP. You cannot assign these IP address as a public IP address. Otherwise, you cannot build a security on top of your private IP ranges because in an organization, you can have your own devices which are not publicly exposed using the public IP. So that's why uh, IETF, which is an uh, 
Internet Engineering Task Force Committee, which decides that these are the IP ranges for private and these are the IP ranges which is available for public. So that's where we need to uh, also be very careful about choosing the IP ranges which falls under the public and which falls under our private IP ranges. Let's take the one more concept and which we call it as a loopback address and here onto the screen you can see this is our loopback address which is the address of your local machine and why we need a loopback address because although your device is not connected to any network but still it will have its own loopback address and these loop back address whenever you define or use then you are not sending data or a packet on the network you are just transmitting your packet or data or information within those uh, your local system or your local machine so that's why we always call it as a loop back address of your local machine now let's talk about the broadcast address and why it is necessary so suppose you have a private network where you have a hundred devices so using the broadcast address you can send the same packet or data simultaneously on all the hundred devices so that's where we always use the broadcast address whenever we want to transmit the data simultaneously on all the devices within our private network let's talk about the link local address and why it is so important so nowadays at your home you have your wi-fi devices and in those wi-fi devices you are having internet but whenever you bring in any new device or any new mobile phone and you try to connect to your Wi-Fi, then after successful connection to your Wi-Fi router or device, then you get a IP address. And that automatic generation of IP address is called link local address. So link local address is responsible for automatically assigning an IP to your device whenever that device pops up in that particular network. So that's where the link local address comes in. So with that we conclude like what is our IP address and I hope this session will help you to understand the IP address or IPv4 address in a better way. In the next video I'll be talking about the CIDR and the CIDR ranges and how we calculate these IP ranges for our private network which is more uh, important topic when you try to put some security on your private network.